Good morning students, Sairam. Let's continue with chapter 12, Ratio and Proportion. We are in part 4. So as usual, we will first the solve the problem which was given as homework. Problem number 11 of exercise 12.1. I hope you have all done the homework. Please check your solution. What was the problem? The problem was out of 1,800 students in a school, 750 opted basketball, 800 opted cricket and remaining opted table tennis. If a student can opt only one game, find the ratio of A, number of students who opted basketball to the number of students who opted table tennis. Table tennis is not given, the number of students who opted table tennis it is not given, we have to find it out from the given data. Then B, number of students who opted cricket to the number of students opting basketball. C, number of students who opted basketball to the total number of students. So, we will one by one solve A, B and C part. Please check your answers. So, A is number of students who opted basketball to the number of students who opted table tennis. So, we have to find out the number of students who opted table tennis. How do we do that? From the total number of students, we will subtract the number of students who opted for basketball and cricket. That will give us the number of students who opted table tennis. So, total number of students is students who opted basketball plus students who opted cricket plus students who opted table tennis. Now, what is the total number of students? It is 1800 and 750 is the number of students who opted basketball and 800 is the students who, who are the students who opted cricket and plus students who opted table tennis. So, when we subtract, uh, we add 750, 750 and 800 and that number when we subtract from total number of students, then we get the number of students who opted table tennis. So, the number of students who opted table tennis is 1800 minus 1550. This you can do directly in one step. For your better understanding, I have taken so many steps. Students who opted table tennis is finally the figure we got, it is 250. Now, we can find out the ratio of students who opted basketball to the number of students who opted table tennis. So, the number of students who opted basketball is 750, 750 is to 250, this is the number of students who opted table tennis. So, when we simplify, what do we get? We can cancel the zeros, then we get 75 upon 25 and 75 upon 25 can be further simplified by dividing by 5. So, what do we get? We get 15 upon 5 which can further be simplified by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 5, we get 3 upon 1. So, the required ratio of students who opted basketball to the students who opted table tennis is 3 is to 1. We should always get the ratio in the simplest form. B part, number of students who opted cricket to the number of students who opted basketball. So, as we know the ratio uh, will be uh, between students who opted cricket and students who opted basketball. So, the number of students who opted cricket is 800 and the number of students who opted basketball is 750. So, it gives us 800 upon 750. We can remove the uh, cancel the zeros then we get 80 upon 75 dividing both numerator and denominator by 5 to get the simplest form. Okay. To get the simplest form, we divide both the numbers numerator and denominator by their HCF, 5 is their HCF. Okay. So, what do we get? We get 16 upon 15 or 16 is to 15. So, the required ratio is 16 is to 15. Now, coming to the third part that is C part of the problem number of students who opted basketball to the number of total number of students. So, the number of students who opted basket who opted basketball is 750 and total number of students is 1800. So, it is 750 is to 
1800. So, we can write it like this 750 divided by 1800. So, we can uh, cancel the zeros then we get 75 upon 180 then we can uh, simplify it by dividing with 3 first then we get 25 upon 60 25 upon 60 can be divided by 5 to get 5 upon 12. So, the ratio of students who opted basketball to the total number of students is 5 is to 12. So, this was the solution, solution to the problem 11. So, please check your solutions and if there are any mistakes, please make the corrections. Now, let us move on to the next problem of exercise 12.1. Problem number 12 cost of a dozen pens is rupees 180 and cost of 8 ball pens is rupees 56. Find the ratio of the cost of a pen to the cost of a ball pen. Students here we have to be very careful the cost of dozen pens, dozen pen means 12 pens is given alright is given as rupees 180 it is cost of 12 pens. So, we have to find out the cost of one pen and cost of eight ball pens is given as rupees 56. So, we have to also find out the cost of one ball pen. So, how do we do that? Let us see cost of 12 pens is equal to rupees 180. So, the cost of one pen will be 180 divided by 12. So, we can simplify by dividing it, it with 2 in 2 steps. Uh, and then with 3. So, 180 upon 12 divided by 2 gives us 90 upon 6. Again, we simplify it by dividing with 2 both the numerator and denominator we get 45 upon 3. 45 upon 3 can be further simplified. So, we divide both by 3 and we get 15 upon 1 that means rupees 15. The rupees 15 is the cost of one pen. Then we will find the cost of one ball pen. How do we do that? We know cost of eight ball pens is given as rupees 56. So, the cost of one ball pen will be rupees 56 upon 8. So, both can be divided by 2 to simplify we get 28 upon 4 which can further be divided by 2 to get 14 upon 2 which can further be simplified by dividing with 2. So, we get finally rupees 7 upon 1 or 7. So, the cost of one ball pen is equal to rupees 7. You can do the simplification process by uh, your own methods also but, but the answer should be correct. So, the cost of one pen is one ball pen is rupees 7. Now, we will find the ratio of cost of pen and cost of a ball pen. So, cost of a pen is found to be rupees 15 and cost of a ball pen is rupees 7. So, it becomes 15 upon 7. So, 15 upon 7 is the lowest form of the ratio. We cannot further simplify it. So, we will take it as 15 is to 7. So, the cost the ratio of cost of pen to cost of ball pen is 15 is to 7. Now, let us move on to the next problem, problem number 13. Consider the statements, a statement ratio of breadth and length of a hall is 2 is to 5. It is 2 is to 5. Complete the following table that shows some possible breadths and lengths of the hall. So, here the ratio is 2 is to 5 that means it is 2 upon 5. And we have to understand that all these are equivalent ratios of the 2 upon 5, equivalent ratio of 2 is to 5. So, breadth of wall uh, given in meters and length of wall also given in meters. So, 10 upon 25 is one equivalent fraction of uh, one equivalent ratio of 2 upon 5 or 2 is to 5. Now, next one is 2 is also equivalent ratio of 2 is to 5. So, how can we get it? 
if we multiply 5 by 10 then we get 50 isn't it so in the blank space also the numerator also we can multiply by 10 and then we get 20 so in the blank space we can fill 20 and third ratio the third one also is equivalent ratio of 2 is to 5 isn't it or 2 upon 5 so it is given as 40 and then here we have blank space in the denominator so 2 can be multiplied by 20 to get 40 isn't it so the denominator also we can multiply by 20 and 5 multiplied by 20 gives us 100 so in the blank space we can write 100 this is one way of solving this problem otherwise i have shown uh, the cross multiplication method also you can solve by that method also given ratio of breadth to length is 2 is to 5 so the ratio is 2 upon 5 okay so it is 2 upon 5 is equal to 10 upon 25 so it is blank space upon 50 is equal to 40 upon blank space then how we do it by cross multiplication method you please watch that also you can follow any method which you find easy so 2 upon 5 is equal to blank upon 50 here so we can cross multiply what can we do we can multiply blank space with 5 and 2 into 50 so 2 into 50 is equal to blank space into 5 so we can bring 5 here so it becomes 2 multiplied by 50 by 5 so blank space we get as 2 into 10 that means it is 20 here also in by the same method we can do it we can cross multiply multiply so it becomes 2 into blank space is equal to 40 into 5 so we bring the 2 here then it divides 40 into 5 so it becomes 20 into 5 so 20 into 5 is 100 by this method also you can find the solution and fill the blanks problem number so this is how the table look lo looks like it is 10 upon 25 is equal to 20 upon 15 is equal to 40 upon 100 they are all equivalent ratios of 2 upon 5 now let us move on to the next problem problem number 14 exercise 12.1 divide 20 pence between Sheila and Sangeeta in the ratio of 3 is to 2 so we have 20 pence which have to be divided among between Sheila and Sangeeta in the ratio of 3 is to 2 so the total number of pence is 20 and the ratio should be 3 is to 2 between the uh, Sheila and Sangeeta. So, it is 3 upon 20 which means 3 parts of total pens should go to Sheila and 2 parts of the total pens should go to Sangeeta. Now, let us see how we solve this. We find the sum of 2 terms of the ratio. The 2 terms of the ratio are 3 and 2. So, we add 3 and 2 we get 5. So, Sheila will get 3 upon 5 of total pens and Sangeeta will get 2 upon 5 of total pens. So, total number of pens is 20. So, what will be Sheila share? It will be 3 upon 5 of 20. 3 upon 5 multiplied by 20. So, we can cancel 20 by 5. 5 4 times is 5 once times a 5 and 5 4 times 20. So, it becomes 3 multiplied by 4. So, it is 12 pence. So, ignore this 5. So, it is 12 pence. So, Sheila's share is 12 pence. And what is Sangeeta's share? It is 2 fifth of 20. That means 2 upon 5 into 20. Again, by uh, simplifying 20 upon 5 by 5, we get 5 1 by 5 and 5 4s are 20. So, 2 multiplied by 4 we get and it is 8 pence. So, Sangeeta's share will be 8 pence. So, Sheila gets 12 pence and Sangeeta gets 8 pence 
if 20 pence are divided in the ratio of 3 is to 2 between Sheila and Sangeeta. Children with this problem I end this session we will solve more problems in our coming session. Thank you.